let's just jump into the app that uh that you know you had a video a couple of days ago <laughs> and mm. it was perfect title obviously you got the perfect <laughs> thumbnail like yeah. some you know you being you know deact you know doordash deactivated me after 21,000 deliveries like mm. that is i would click it i think a lot of people did clearly <laughs> for sure but, um okay so you start i'm assuming you started your day your regular day doing doordash oh actually tell me like what it, like was it right so i, 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 so I was, your app like what what happened exactly right, so basically you know monday 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 night to sun, to tuesday morning i'm working right my w2 so right. i checked my schedule around three in the morning just to make sure everything is good whatever and i was able to log in everything is fine so you know then i i got out of work around like five went home for a little bit and then around 6 30 you know come come back outside and then i try to log in and i couldn't it just at first it just kept spinning like i'm like oh it's glitching that happens all the time whatever right. close the app did it again and then it said oh your account's been deactivated due to suspicious uh they said they said um what do they say suspicious or unusual activity and then i, I went to my emails right because they always say you're supposed to get an email while you get deactivated this and that right no email you know so right away i'm like okay well this kind of sucks but at the same time I'm like well we can make a video about this you know so i did it like real on the fly they didn't you know write anything down just kind of just got everything off my chest real quick right. um and that's that basically it you know i did the appeal right right before i started the video um i actually done two appeals just because why not right um right. and i do get an email response saying we've received your appeal but i haven't gotten any other email you know anything from doordash okay so currently you're you're still on an appeal let me, let me check let me check real quick let me check <laughs> let, let me know um, cause that, that's where the big issues get yeah, your account to be activated. You're okay. So you're requesting and you, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I've seen that I'll, you know, I've heard some people that have, that talked about this say that you should have gotten some kind of email. Now I haven't been deactivated from DoorDash. I've been deactivated from Grubhub for inactivity. I believe I didn't get an email. I just logged in and then kind of told you like, oh, the reason why is probably one of these reasons. So I kind of figured that out and I had to get back on. But, you know, I mean, what's your what's your feeling on the idea that they can make, you know, deactivate you and not send any kind of information well, to I think you? Like, hey, it, part, it's not even that. It's the fact that they can hold your money. I think that's the scariest part. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you want to give it to me, cool, go ahead, but let me get my money. You know what I mean? So that's, uh, I mean, I have to, I have to dash it direct. Um, after it, as soon as it came out, I really liked it because you know you get paid right away. So, right. uh, but for me, that's still a bridge, you know, between your ma main account, whatever banking you have, and DoorDash because you know the app goes down sometimes. And even if you ever have any type of issues with Dash Direct, if you call the number, it takes you to DoorDash support. It's so useless, it's so pointless, right? Because one time I had like a weird transaction happen. And when I called the number, it was just DoorDash support and the agents can't do anything. So that was just kind of dumb. Yeah. Um, but I knew that I hadn't really, I didn't have that much money there. So I, whatever I had there, I cashed out my rewards. I sent everything to my cash app real quick. That was the fastest way I could get my money out of there. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I didn't want to hold it there, you know? Um, so that to me was the scariest part. Um, but yeah, I didn't get any email. I looked at my spam and it's funny because that day, the same day I got my email saying, Oh, you didn't meet the requirements for shop and deliver, you know, dash now anytime or whatever it's called. I thought it was funny that I was getting those like promotional emails from DoorDash, but not like anything that I was looking for. Yeah. If that makes sense. So you, you've, I'm sure that you probably thought back, okay, what exactly could have it been? Um, do you have any idea of a delivery you've done or something that you think may have caused I this? Think I think, and this is just my gut, I think it's the last contract violation that I got. Of course, the one day I don't record, right? The one day that I was just wasn't recording. Yeah. Um, it was it was a shopping order from CVS, you know, for a for a vibrator. The lady wanted a vibrator, 50 bucks, whatever it was. Okay. Uh, you know, the order was good. The order was paying eleven twenty five less than a mile. She tipped nine dollars, you know, right. so that was great. I yeah. drop it off, everything's cool. And then when I end my my dash, I see why, why do I have a contract violation? And I click on it and it says like order never never deliver, never arrived, whatever it said. You know, so I go there, I put I put in there, hey, I have you know X amount of deliveries. Like, why would I why would I want this adult toy? There's nothing for me. You know, like I basically plead my case, but I'm like, right. you know what? I'm just gonna do hundred deliveries, it'll fall off, no big deal. Yeah. Um 
And then I think a couple of days before that, I got the email from from Checker saying, oh, they're rerunning your background. I said, cool, no problem. You know, so th- that came through fine. Um, and, you know, I didn't think much about it. A couple of weeks before that, I had to do the um, face ID thing where, they, you know, you scan your license and they like, you basically do like the whole selfie thing, you know, move right. your head to left. And everything was fine because I saw a lot of people saying that they got deactivated because they couldn't verify that. And I was yeah. kind of afraid of that because in my license, I was I was fatter, you know, so I look fatter in my license than I do in real life. So I'm like, yeah, what do they think of somebody else? You know, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But luckily, you know, I guess I'm still fat enough that it went through. So <laughs> you still look. Mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's enough, enough to, pat to get through with the technology. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes either with me with Uber, like, you know, when they say take a selfie, if I'm in too much of a dark room, they it's like, you're not here. I'm like, oh, no, I am. I'm just, I'm a black. So I got to turn on light. There was one time I was in the car at night trying to do it. I had to pull over, go into a store or go in somewhere where there's enough light for Uber to recognize me. So Man. I understand the, you know, the, the limitations of the technology. But I, I guess, it, like you said, the biggest issue that I find with a lot of these uh, deactivations is the lack of information, like the lack of easy to don't know mm-hmm. what's going on or they're not being transparent and we just supposed to take their word for it and like i said it could be that last uh delivery it could be a glitch it could be anything right and i know a lot of a lot yeah because like, when you saying. appeal it when you appeal it it's not even that's not even one of the options like gives you a bunch fraud you know your background was failed or a bunch of different options but there isn't uh, suspicious or unusual activity. That's not one of the options out of the 20 ones they give you. Right. So you just kind of click other and you, you know, type it up or whatever. So I thought that was interesting. I think it's just very broad. You know, I think, um, I, I, I mean, my, my conspiracy side come, comes out a little bit and I'm like, okay, well, they're releasing all this new DoorDash rewards tier program, tier system. And then a bunch yep. of people get deactivated. Like, you know, what's up with that? So well, we were definitely going to talk about that because I would love your opinions on that. But, you know, I mean, it's still fresh, obviously. Mm-hmm. There's only been a few days, but going through it, um, was DoorDash your biggest income in terms of the oh, yeah. apps? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, I think right now I'll put, I'll put uh, DoorDash and then uh, Empower. I, they have it in New York, too, but um, it's, it's like a, a Reicher app. Yes, power. you told me you told uh, me about that a couple of months ago. Yeah, it's, how- it's popular in New York, apparently. They have that, and then Grubhub, and then Aviho, and then I just got back on Uber. So that's my latest video coming back up. Um, so I nice. you know made a little bit of money with Uber, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, DoorDash, like I said, as long as I scheduled, uh, I knew my merchants. I have you know little side deals with some of them, like I do deliveries for them to give me cash because they don't want to go through the apps, you know what I mean? Right. They don't want to pay the fee. They're like, Hey, we know you, you know where you're going, here's 40 bucks. No problem. Yeah. So, yeah. It, so right now, so has your income taken a hit? Have you been able to maintain? I mean, again, it's only a couple of days, but um, right. ha- what adjustments are you currently going through in terms of, you know, trying to maintain, you know, the income that you've been well, doing? You know, as soon as it happened, you know, I thought about that. I'm like, okay, well, we got, we got the whole week. Um, so, but my daughter got sick on Thursday, so they didn't really work on Thursday. So that kind of sucked. But, you know, the whole video definitely helped because I was making 80 bucks in like three hours, no matter what. Um, and then the thing with Grubhub, a couple orders here and there. So my usual goal for the week is at least a thousand. And I think I made like 700 uh, this week. But that's was working. I didn't work on Sunday and I didn't work on Thursday. So I think right. overall it wasn't that bad. Plus I know myself. I know I knew that even if I got, even if I lost my job, I would find something to do like the same day. You know right. what I mean? They're, everybody's hiring. There's so many things. There's so many different apps that you can do. So I think, uh, yeah, does the activation suck because it came out of nowhere? Yes. But at the same time, you got to be able to adjust, you know. Uh, and right away, I, I've been slacking and going to the Uber office in D.C. because it's in the ghetto uh, for years. But as soon as that happened, I took my butt over there on Wednesday and we figured everything out. Yeah. So you How know, was the process kinda, going, getting back on Uber? Was it a... It wasn't that difficult, actually. Well, I, I wanted to record it, you know, but they didn't let me, of course. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but the, the guy was cool. You know, he said he watches the channel and things like that. I, I guess what had happened was when I signed up, either someone had my same phone number and at the same time and somehow that messed everything up. Um, so, you know, because I wasn't Uber initially, but then I couldn't log in afterwards. So I couldn't go online. It would say, like, talk to support, whatever. So I had to just update my documents, you know, give them, show them my new license, this and that. Uh, the whole background check, 
with the checker, but it, I think it's faster when you do it in person. Right. Maybe they just put you at the top of the list or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it didn't take very long. I would think I was there maybe like two hours, three hours at most. Um, but I wasn't the only one that was there for that. There are a lot of people there with different issues, you know. But yeah. overall, I'm, I'm happy that I'm back on Uber for sure. So this is another, you know, since you, you're into conspiracy theories, do you think <laughs> that there's an issue uh, coming from DoorDash about us content creators, people making videos that they really don't appreciate it and they'll find any reason to let people go? Do you think that's a possibility? Do you think? I or definitely think it's a nonsense? possibility. I mean, I'm sure DoorDash is a big enough company. I'm sure they have like a marketing team or like youtube team that they only do is watch youtube stuff you know what i mean yeah so uh i'm sure but you know uh, when i called support even though they're pretty useless one of them told me well you have a lot of deliveries that's kind of suspicious but i was like well i've been on i've been on the platform for a long time yeah you know you work another, hard but, that's weird another, that's something another, another person told me you know oh uh we can't tell you anything due to privacy issues whose privacy it's my info like i want to know what's going on yeah. You know, and someone else told me you got to wait 96 hours. That's like four or five days. It's already happened. And like nothing, nothing happened. But looking at my comments and people are like, oh, it took them three months, it took them three weeks to reactivate me and this and that. So there's a, you know, it's all up in the air, really. It's like what happened was like they try to, they push you out in retirement. They're like, homeboy's <laughs> done enough. He's too good at this or he demands too much money. Push him out to get the, the new guy that's going to take anything. Because like you said, when you started, it was $6. I think yeah. a lot of issues, and again, we'll talk about the Dash Rewards in a, in a few minutes, but if, if if it stayed at $5, $6, I don't think would, a, lot, a lot of this legislation would have happened. A lot of people getting all upset. If it was $5, yeah. we would be cool. Like $5 for whatever. Like it's, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, back in 2018, 19, I've seen a lot of the older videos. People were making good money. And no one was complaining, but when you when you say <laughs> base pay is two fifty, then that's the problem, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's like it's like we know when whatever the saying is, like you know how good you have it till it's till it's gone. It's like, yeah. I never thought I would see like a two twenty five base pay, or you know, back then if I saw eight fifty, I knew I knew that was a banger. Eight fifty was a magical number in my area, and then yeah. next thing you know, that became six fifty, six twenty five, six seventy five, <laughs> and I was like, man, like what is going on, you know? But at yeah. the same time, it's it's a wave. I seen people become dashers that used to work in restaurants and then they go back to the restaurant and say, Hey man, it wasn't for me. It didn't work out for me. You know? Um, Cause I feel like, you know, I don't think we're a special breed of people, but you know, you got to have the right mentality. You got to have the right work ethic. Cause yeah. there's a lot of people that just want to get paid by the hour and that this isn't it. That, that's not what this is, you know? Yeah. So looking back at DoorDash, right. As a company looking back, do you think there's anything you could have done differently or do you think there was anything you could have done differently? I don't uh, I mean, I'm thinking of thinking about my videos. I mean, I've never posted anyone's personal info. Yeah. I mean, I might say the first name of whoever I'm picking up, but that's you know, anyone, anyone. can anyone can be named Hannibal. You know, like it's not yeah. like a well, very specific thing. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> kind of a rare name. But yeah, definitely, it's a lot of Hannibal. But you I, know, I never know show, like uh, you know addresses or anything like that. And most of my recordings in public, and you know, there's no expectation of privacy in public. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think so, but. Maybe, you know, some of the comments, a lot of people are like, oh, well, your assessment rating is too low. I mean, there's no lingo that says that can deactivate me, you know, but no. they're like, oh, I read somewhere it's got to be 50%, this and that. So there's a lot of like new misinformed dashers. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're trying to push out the people that are like, okay, you know, I've done it long enough to see the $6 and then like now, now we're down to two twenty five or $2, whatever it is now with the, with the pay. Yeah, and let, let's let's jump right in with the Dash Rewards. So I'm sure you're familiar with it. If anyone isn't, it's a pilot program. This is starting out right now. It's in uh, Michigan and Texas. Uh, well, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Corpus Christi, Texas. I think Lubbock, Texas. So it's some few cities, not the entire state. Right. So right now it's uh, silver, gold, and platinum status. I kept saying diamond in my video talking about it but it's whatever it's all the same nonsense it's got acceptance rate completion rate so if you want all right so silver you get nothing you they hate you you get i don't think you get anything i guess you get to dash that's about it right yeah you, you, i think it says you get to schedule i think is what it says yeah you get to schedule. yeah but they'll, they'll spit on you if they see it but mm. gold this is where it goes okay you gotta get to at least 70 percent <laughs> just from one i think it's silver to 50 actually silver yeah. is 50 that's already that's five. already tough man. yeah gold is 70 and then uh, platinum 
it's 70, but it's a rotating of the last 100 deliveries. It's mm. dynamic, meaning that if you once you decline enough and it goes to 69%, you are no longer in right. that in that record. So that is no longer wait until the end of the month. They want you to maintain that 70% th forever, basically, over 70%. Mm. And then you get some really awesome rewards. So you get to gold, you get VIP support. That's great. I mean, I don't know what that means. Access, I guess, uh, include priority scheduling. And then platinum is where you get the large orders, right? The large order program goes. So you get the dash name time and large awards program. So in my opinion, a very aggressive uh, shift for DoorDash. Yeah. But give me your thoughts. When you saw that uh, program, do you think it's a pilot? So we'll just admit that it's mm -hmm. a pilot program. But what do you think? Do you think it go will be nationwide? Like, what's your thoughts on the program? Ooh, man, I think goes going back to what you said. You know, maybe they looked at some of the YouTubes and people doing Hell Week, and they're like, "Well, we got we gotta we gotta fix that." You know, how do we yeah. fix that? Just, just make, make it Hell better. Month. <laughs> you know, so I think they probably saw that a lot of people were doing the last week of, you know, of the month, and they were like, "Okay, well, we gotta fix that." And I think there's enough people that I've seen either on YouTube or just met that are just so like pro company pro doordash they're like oh this is great like you know i think what doesn't make sense to me is okay if you're going to be so busy trying to keep your rating so high you're probably going to miss out on those catering orders because you're over here doing a wendy's order you know that's what i mean point. so i don't know how, uh, i don't know how that's going to work even even with the whole like being prioritized if everyone's prioritized and no one's prioritized you know what i mean um so i think I think it's going to maybe take some time to be like nationwide, but I think that's probably the route they want to go, man. I think they want to so, go the route of people take every delivery, no matter what it pays, if you want to be on the app. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I, I'm trying to look at it. Okay, how can... So let's... I'm trying to find out a, a strategy to maximize your, your earnings. But that's a good point, what you're saying. Like, if you're, if you're so busy trying to maintain the high rewards, when do you become picky? Like mm -hmm. when when does the the you being an independent track contractor follow through? When do you get to like okay, I got to a hundred, which is crazy to take that much bad offers. <laughs> then you start to cherry pick, trying to find the large order program stuff. Like yeah, that's that's a really good point because yeah, we're trying to maximize earnings, but and you're taking everything because most people don't tip. You may miss out on the really good offer that may come your way. So. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like, let's say, for instance, you get back on DoorDash and this program lands in your area, your neck of, neck of the woods. What is your strategy? Are you just still doing no tip, no uh, trip? You're going yeah, like, to, what would your strategy I, I think, well, the, the amount of volume that I see in my market, like, you know, on a normal day, I would see, I would say probably see 200 offers or take 12, 11, maybe. Not because I want to, it's because that's a lot of garbage that I don't want to take. So right. people are like, oh, you cherry pick. And I'm like, I don't. I used to be a heavy cherry picker. And I'm like, yo, if I see 650, 3.5 miles, I'm on that. Because I know there's a lot of 225s, 10 miles, or right. you know, a lot of just crazy orders out there. So I think if I do get back on and it comes live into my market, then I'm going to be that, you know, I'm going to be that below silver, whatever that is. Just <laughs> Yeah. I, I guess <laughs> it's wood I mean? or some kind of, you're a rock. Like, it, it's, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's kind of... Uh, I would say pretty assertive uh, move. I mean, I'll say aggressive I think, as I think well. What's gonna happen is they're probably gonna roll something like this, but not as not as like heavy. Like I feel like the whole fifty percent, maybe down to thirty, and then fifty. You know, I think they're gonna tweak it a little bit yeah. to be more, I guess, more possible for everyone to meet. I don't know. Yeah. I just I just don't see everyone being able to to be that. It's, it's too hard with all the trash out here. So what do you think about the new program compared to the incentives or the initiatives by the other apps? Um, I know like door um, Uber Eats has a tier system. Some people think mm -hmm. that being a platinum driver makes a big difference. Um, Grubhub has their thing. Is DoorDash just following everyone else or is this more assertive? Like I said, trying to get the anytime dash, you dash anytime and you're getting a large order program and you're getting all this other stuff. Like what do you think how they're doing it is co compared to other apps well I, I think maybe for them they kind of think maybe they fell behind because they haven't done something like that and i think yeah. with with grubhub it's been like that since the beginning of time i think the yeah. whole being a premier driver or whatever you know and i think it's good for people that like labels for example i know someone at work that you know he likes to have a fancy title <laughs> but he doesn't get paid as much you know what i mean so i'd rather get yeah. paid more and be the be whatever 
but get paid more. Does that make sense? Like I, I know there's a lot of people that take a lot of pride in like, well, I'm I'm a platinum driver. What does that mean? You know, and I think uh, for a lot of people out there that are easily like uh, maybe I don't want to say trick, but I think if they can be per, per, persuaded to take orders and have this elite status in their mind, you know, I think yeah. you can justify it in your head. Oh, I'm going to do that and be this, you know, where I'm more like I'd rather not do all that and then just take whatever makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, what I think is happening, and I, I'm actually making a video talking about uh, what's going on in New York, because New York, they finally signed the law for minimum wage for people so like that were. 19 bucks? Uh, no, 17.96 right now. And a year yeah. from now, it, it'll get higher and higher. But I think, at least for DoorDash, I think they realize that a lot of places are going to do some kind of weird law and legislation and stuff like that. And I think they're just trying to keep a keep ahead by exerting more control. So I think by you putting out the like putting DoorDash putting out these different colors and levels, like you be silver, gold, platinum, diamond, mm -hmm. plutonium, whatever, where they do want to discourage you from multi-apping. They want you to, like I said, maybe the the identity, the psychology of wow, I'm a, I'm a platinum driver, platinum dasher. I get VIP support and blah, blah, blah. They want they, they, they probably didn't want, they want to discourage multi app It's like, Hey, listen, if you just do, you kind of pretend to be an employee. We're going to, we're going to bless you. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to give you the orders that, that you can, you know, this is worth your while. If you just work with us, take yeah. a little bit of tra trash and work with us. So like, ideally that does, that kind of makes sense. If, if, if it was a real, transparent honest relationship with a with your business right like if you were working with somebody even if it was freelance you said okay yeah this you know this this client sucks but if you do this client um this other client i got you later is going to bless you that would work but in reality i don't know if that works what do you think well i think part of me is i feel like doordash has a track record of lying um you know do you remember when they came out saying oh we're going to reduce the base pay but if you go in a longer mileage delivery we're going to pay you more that was that maybe oh. that maybe lasted two weeks you know <laughs> what i mean uh and then after that it's it went back to the usual 225 here's a 10 mile order you know yeah. so i i think if trusting a company an algorithm that 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 to me doesn't make any sense you know if i was talking to an actual person and say oh hannibal saying hey man you take these many orders the fifth one it'll be yeah. a banger you know, but there, there's no guarantee of that. Yeah. And I think people just psych themselves out. Like, okay, I'm taking this. I'm going to get rewarded. And that may or may not happen. Or it could be just pure luck. In the end, it's all about where you are driving, right? The right time, right place, right time of the day. You know, sometimes it's just luck. Yeah. So, you know, like like I said, this this was a good chunk of your income. Um, you made, you know, made videos about it. Uh, and I, I say for many other content creators, you were you, you know, like you were sitting there saying everyone sucked, DoorDash sucks, <laughs> and like there's some really aggressive content creators. I'm sure you know some. You know, like mm. they like you were really, really aggressive. You weren't going after anybody. I think you're just doing your thing and making your mm. money. You had your goals. You had your amount of money you're looking to make. So I didn't yeah. know, where, you know, in terms of um, dealing with you know these apps, but but you know, I'll be honest. Do you plan to continue working in the gig economy uh, despite these challenges? In the oh, for sure. Future. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Even even if Doris is back to me three months from now, you know, I'll rebrand my my name to something else, and we'll figure it out. But yeah, I think there's a lot of money to be made with a bunch of different apps, and I think you have the right attitude and the work ethic, and of course, being in the right market. You know, all the usual lingo. Like it's all about the market, right? So right, right, right. You know, like I try to get on Spark, waitlisted. I try like a bunch of different zip codes. I have these people try to help me. Hey, man, I'm I'm out here in Maryland. Try this zip code. Nope, full. You know what yeah. I mean? Amazon Flex still waitlisted, you know, but there's so many different opportunities that I think, you know, I, maybe it's just the way that I'm wired. Like I'm a real positive person. So even if, like I said, even if I lost my job, we'll figure it out. And right. I think I drives my, my wife nuts because she's the opposite. She's like, you know, do good, the, the world's ending. <laughs> you know? And then she's like, how can you be so calm? I'm like, it's just, if I worry about something I have no control over, like the whole DoorDash thing, like I'm just going right. to, you know, it's, it's not healthy. For right. me, you know, so. definitely, definitely. It's good to have a good balance. I think that, you know, you, you want, you know, I think it works. The worry world where the person is kind of like a Chucky Tommy thing. I don't know if you watch Rugrats back in the day, but yeah. it's kind of like one is overly, but maybe too, too confident. One is too, too worried. And, but together they make a good team. So I think yeah. that's it. I think it, you're right. It, you, it's, it sucks because 
it is a, a ability to make income, to make bills, provide for your family. And we just wish that we can talk to a human being, a human being that can understand the situation instead of, Even if I don't know. Just somebody you know. here, somebody here, somebody in this side of the globe, you know, yeah. uh, that would be, be great. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, people told me, hey, go to, go to Twitter. Twitter, they get back to you faster. And I've done that. And in Twitter, they just kind of go, oh, yeah, please send us your email. We're going to reach out to you. No. It's like, you know, when you call support, we're going to escalate to the right team. Yeah, that's what is the right team. You know, like <laughs> that team doesn't exist, bro. It's like the people in the in it's like the people in, in the uh the DoorDash council or whatever. They're not real dashers. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like it's uh it's like that. But I think part of me is also not freaking out because I do have a W2 income. If I didn't have that, you know, to lay back on, then I'd be like, Oh, okay, like what what are we doing today to make that money? 